back everyone, it's me Matt, thank you for joining me today. Before we get started on today's video, let me know in the comment section below if you have ever worked with artillery or what your favourite artillery piece is throughout history, not just of modern day artillery, what is a piece of artillery equipment that you have absolutely loved or been interested in? I would love to know in the comment section, let me know. And of course, if you do enjoy today's video, I'd really appreciate it if you leave me a little like. So today we're talking about the Archer artillery system, the 155 millimeter Swedish made BA systems behemoth of a gun. It is a beautiful self-propelled artillery piece wheeled, of course. Um, there is obviously a lot of discussion around the world as to what is the next generation of artillery. My channel has talked about this many, many times before. But why am I talking once again about self-propelled artillery and once again about Archer? Well, as many of you know, I was in the British Army, uh, not on artillery at the time, I was in the Remi, uh, but I have a lot of, uh, you know, interest in understanding what the British Army is getting up to. And of course, the British Army is doing a lot of work in its next generation of artillery pieces, and this is one of the forefront members of that. Following a January announcement from the Secretary of State of Defense granting in kind 32 AS 90 self propelled guns to Ukraine, there was obviously a gigantic gap created in the 155mm close support capability for the artillery in the Royal Artillery. This gap really needs to be bridged in order to meet the UK's commitment for NATO as a new force model. This results in the MOD procurement of an interim solution via a rapid in-year government-to-government acquisition with, of course, Sweden. Now, the vehicles have finally come into the acquisition for the British Army within the last six months. Uh, very, very quickly, actually. BA Systems, both as in Sweden. Um, further four will arrive in the UK by the end of this year to balance by a spring of 2024 which is a very, very fast time span to get these vehicles in place, nearly as fast as you can see by these time to impact and engagements for this fire mission. Incredible, within 74 seconds, uh, this platform is able to get literally three rounds in the air um, and off it goes again, the true shoot and scoot capabilities. Um, there's a spokesperson for the British Army, Colonel Nassi, that explained these are undergoing trials and evaluations for approximately the next six months. Artillery will start training on them from the spring of next year. Uh, and firing them with the UK in next summer. Um, primarily, there's 14 of them in total service, but as I said, the Archer is an interim solution until the delivery of the Mobile Fires Platform Project at the end of the decade. This is a separate program, which is a replacement program for heavy artillery. This is not a replacement for the AS-90. Of course, there's a lot of discussions about, well, what is replacing the AS-90? We've talked a little bit about this on my channel before as well. Of course, we do have the K9 Thunder. They still want a tracked capability, but this is a really short-term solution to fill that gap of losing so many AS-90s to the Ukrainian conflict. But why else is the news kind of blowing up a little bit about this platform? Well, before I get into it, I want to showcase to you my own little Archer Lego system that I have here. Um, I'm going to build this model for you as we explain it and go through this. Um, BA Systems, by the way, I love the fact that you made a little Lego Archer system. This is fun to build. Um, guys, I know you're probably asking, where can I get my own? I have no idea this was sent to me by someone who works alongside BA Systems. They said, hey, Matt, I'm sure you'd really enjoy this. So, of course, please uh, enjoy as I try and build this thing. I'm not super good at doing Lego, I'll be honest with you. But uh, so let's get back to, you know, why is the news blowing up again about this system? Well, BAE has unveiled recently that new industry team members are joining them in collaboration for this platform. Babcock and Rheinmetall BA Systems Land, or RBSL, are joining a BAE-led team offering the Archer 8x8 wheeled artillery system for the Ministry of Defense's Mobile Fires Platform Program, and this was announced on December 11th. Now, the Archer, inherently being built by BAE as a Swedish defense operation, however, the company has said that the British industry could actually amount to 60% of its capability of production if Archer is finally selected for the British Army's longer-term objectives. Under the terms of the industrial tie-up, dubbed the Archer Artillery Alliance, BAE will provide and integrate the weapon system as well as setting up an assembly and test facility. The company is currently looking at the potential assembly site actually being in the north of England, having closed its gun production sites there several years ago when the M777 155mm lightweight howitzer production concluded, and of course we use that here currently in Canada. Now, RBSL will lead for supplying of the HX 8x8 truck chassis for the bid. The UK joint venture between BAE and Rheinmetall is currently building Boxer and Challenger 3 armoured vehicles for the British Army. Babcock will have responsibility for consolidation of the superstructure and ammunition supply system while contributing its manufacturing maintenance capabilities. 
Now you'll probably notice very quickly and obviously that the Swedish Archer system is quite different in its actual vehicle configuration than that of the British Army. Now BAE Systems unveiled the modular Archer system to the international market in 2019, but the new version that the British Army is using is mounted on a Rheinmetall RRMV HX2 8x8 truck, different from the Volvo A30 6x6 articulated hauler currently used by the Swedish Army. Now I'm not sure of the actual validity of this particular comment that I keep continuing to see when I talk about Archer, but a lot of people are saying that the Swedish Army's A30 Volvo variant is actually quite difficult to maintain uh, with the articulation and has problems going off road. Now I cannot speak to that, I don't have enough facts, um, but I'd love to hear if you do know more information about this in the comment section. It's always nice to get some feedback of those who have particularly used it because I'm not a huge fan of listening to people just reading some articles and thinking they know that the vehicle is something or something not, um, myself included. But, uh, you know, if you have first time experience of using that A30 Volvo, I'd love to hear your opinion on it because a 6x6 compared to an 8x8 without articulation is a substantial change. Um, you know, Archer's international appeal, though, has always been based on the modularity that allows it to adapt to a variety of different vehicle chassis, meaning it can be more easily integrated to various militaries' existing vehicle fleets. And that's very, very true with the commonality of the British Army because of course they do have their manned fleet of trucks including a vehicle that I first saw come into service when I was leaving the British Army which was the Man SV trucks um, and the 8x8, the only 8x8 vehicle I had actually seen at the time was the recovery variant for the Remi uh, which was an absolute beast but this is a similar platform actually now the example of this platform is mostly in logistics vehicles from the HX series Rheinmetall presents uh, it in 4x4 variants in different configurations um, but in recent months, the Rheinmetall Man Military Vehicles, or RMMV family of vehicles, has raced ahead in competition, including massive procurement wins in Australia, New Zealand, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, and of course the UK. Um, there's a big foundation here of how well these vehicles perform. A lot of people have been questioning, why is it that the Brits didn't go with the standard articulated system? Well, because really though, this vehicle and the platform it comes on with the you know low torsion ladder frame on the HX, uh, and the tried and tested series frame for the civilian man tg series has been very heavily adapted for off-road use and designed to carry heavy equipment across the nastiest levels of terrain i mean i've seen these things work they work very very well even in the 10 by 10 variants these things can pull huge amounts of weight up to 120 tons off-road that's safe to say these things are doing the right thing at the right time and when you're putting something as critical as an artillery piece on a gun platform like this you're going to want to make sure that the self-propelled portion of this thing works very well and i do feel that the selection of ryan metal's man military vehicle uh, platform here is going to be a game changer for the british army i'm certainly not discrediting ba system um it's a different market a different realm um of course you know the uk is a very different climate and environment and operational theater so to speak that's been involved for their military than sweden is sweden you know isn't utilizing um landscapes that of which the brits would be using you know sweden is very very snowy most of the time of course articulated units will work quite well in the snow although again i don't know how factually accurate they are in being able to transfer across that terrain but in all honesty this is really good news for the british army being able to see these new heavy duty platforms coming into place um, for that short term capability stop gap um, with 155 millimeters that can shoot and scoot very very quickly archer is certainly from ba systems going to give a huge tactical advantage to british artillery out there today um, the modern fighting force that is able to capitalize on these kind of you know tactics uh, are really making a game changer when it comes to counter battery artillery fire but for me the big news of this is that the companies are working so tightly together to try and get the equipment built in the uk you know going back to establishing british barrel making capability as part of the deal is really really cool that long range 52 cal barrel potentially being produced in england it's a big deal for me i won't lie i mean it's nice to see that we're going to have um that you know connection to the program too you know british armed forces that are going to be working alongside this equipment know that the product's been built at home and i know that's just a little thing for some but for me it's a big deal if i'm working with equipment in my own nation and of course currently i'm serving here in canada it would be nice to know that it was produced in the country that i'm serving because inherently you know that those people working alongside it are part of your community part of your 
country's livelihood, finances, etc. It's a big deal for me. So I really enjoy the fact that this information has come out, and I'm also really excited for the British artillery, uh, the Royal Artillery, sorry, to see what comes for the future of heavy weapons such as the, uh, you know, the Archer and even, you know, the future programs that's going to be going over to replace the aging AS90 155mm systems because there's still a lot of work to do to replace them in the concept phase of the mobile fires program expected to see 96 wheel or track vehicles delivered with the initial operating capability of 2029 which is in all honesty folks very fast <laughs> it's a really quick turnaround time for a strategic uh, artillery changeover uh, for the entire British Army that's that's a big deal but that's it for today folks thank you for joining me if you did like the video I would really encourage you just click that little thumb button just click the like button it's a massive help for me and leave me a comment let me know what you thought of today's video it's a big help for me also if you're new to my channel click the subscribe button and of course if you want to go check out my social media pages and my patreon and my paypal um, thank you to everyone who's been supporting me on there i cannot thank you enough for the financial contributions you've made to this channel it really does help me produce content for you with equipment you know registration to services etc to produce these videos everything i do is on my own at the moment um i don't have video editors i don't have script writers yet i've done some work to try and get some finances don't quite suit that for me right now unfortunately but uh here we are so thank you for those who have been supporting me i cannot thank you enough and of course if you want to be notified of any upcoming videos in the future Click that little bell so you can be notified. Have a wonderful rest of your day. It's uh, the Christmas season here. So uh, if I don't speak to you or you don't watch another video before the Christmas or New Year's, have a wonderful Christmas and holiday season. And of course, a happy new year. Catch you around, folks. Bye-bye.